When we talk about lean, and our, from our perspective, what we're also seeing is flattened lean organizations have powerful and profound implications for those who are in that middle management realm. We're pushing responsibility out to the edges. We're asking people to make decisions. Is our organization aligned in a way? Do we have a culture that maybe traditionally was more of a command and control, get permission before taking risks type culture, and now we're saying we're flat, we're lean, we've gotten rid of you know, lots of different people for a variety of reasons, and now you get to make a decision. How do you feel about that? Right? And so those are real behaviors we have to be focusing on the culture and the structure of the organization as we take on, and I'm sure you found in the Agile and the Lean piece in other initiatives in many of your organizations, when we fail to focus on that aspect of it, in many cases that's why these, these initiatives are derailed. And again, we'll talk more about that when we actually look at the framework later, hopefully give you some insights and possibly some ideas on how to address these, this situation. Um, we talked a little, thank you, talked a little bit about implications for managers. Uh, just a real quick background, if you're curious about this, I, I will certainly use a few examples from Silicon Valley because we're there. I don't even begin to suggest that we should run our companies like Google and others, but I want to challenge you to think about what can you take by looking at very diverse organizations different from yours and consider that. And here's one quick example about Google. We did have the opportunity to work uh, at Google around uh, some fundamentals and, and project management and also some of the Stanford program. And it was interesting because if any of you saw that movie, The Internship, nobody here is from Google, are you? Is anybody here from the Google London office? Okay, they've got a big, a big presence here. Uh, I'm not really speaking out of school, but if you saw that movie, The Internship, which is kind of a spoof on uh, being an intern, a couple older guys go in and are interns at Google and they make fun of the whole millennial generation in Google, but it's, it's largely factual, not what they say, but you know, there's bicycles and people bringing their dogs to work and kind of like people are, you're not quite sure how work gets done and in spite of themselves, there's an amazingly successful company. Well, a few, couple of years ago, Google actually recognized that there was a, a gap in the, in the leadership ranks because they were largely recruiting and hiring and expanding with younger millennials, actually, in this instance, although not entirely. They didn't have good leadership models. They hadn't come from organizations that, you know, where they had experienced more of these challenges that we've been talking about to date. And so they set out on a project. The good thing is, why I think it's kind of interesting, and I've got some resources if you want to read more, is that there's some insights about what they discovered of what makes an effective leader at Google that now has really been looked at across many organizations. And so I'm not going to go through all the details. It was called Project Oxygen. There's, you can Google that. There's lots of different sources about it. And, um, you know, there's some things here that wouldn't surprise us about coaching and micromanaging, focusing on success, but also this notion of roles and responsibility and, and having clear results orientation. The, the piece about focusing on the career, which we talked about. And then this piece about important to focus on a, uh, leaders have some level of technical skills so that they have credibility amongst their peers, but they also are able to connect the strategy. Why are people doing what they're doing and how does it impact their ability and success on the job? So those are some things they discovered that aren't necessarily earth shattering, but they said, how do we work and focus on that? But conversely, what are the things that get us into trouble? And again, you can imagine that there are many, many of these uh, folks who are becoming leaders and if they've never had a formal role model or if they have worked for a leader, it might have been a job they had you know, in high school or in college, so not a very sophisticated background, um, but they're doing amazing things. So it's important for us to think about what were some of the things they discovered? They did over a thousand uh, observations. They spent a year on this Project Oxygen project. So they took Google Analytics and really applied it, which is, uh, gives it, I think, a lot of credibility too. But this is interesting. A couple of the issues about uh, pitfalls. One was this notion that people, you can take someone, and, and I don't know how many of you find this in your organizations, who becomes a manager? In many technical organizations, who is it? Who gets promoted into management? Technical expertise, maybe it's a salesperson depending upon the type of organization, but often in technical organization it's the technical professional who's, you know, they've done amazing things so now we have to find some way to move them up the ladder and they move into management. And how prepared and how effective are they? Some might be effective, some might be prepared, many are not. And so a lot of organizations are doing, you know, dual career pathing where you can have a technical expert path as well as a management path. But what Google certainly found in their study was this was very much true in their organization too, but in general, 
this notion of promoting people to lead, people who are ill-equipped to lead and maybe will never be equipped to lead. Then the other thing was if, they, if you go to bring people in from the outside, if they don't understand and you don't do some kind of measurement for cultural match and for the kinds of characteristics of your organization, you're not just solved by bringing someone who has an incredible technical background or an incredible pedigree as a leader or manager. If you're not thinking about that context, they come in and they're not successful. A second area was a lack of consistent approach around performance management and career development. And so when people don't understand what's wanted, they don't have a path forward, whether it's through goal setting, whether it's through longer term engagement, that's where a lot of problems would, would hurt, uh, I mean would occur and there would be problems. And then the last piece is just in general there was a, a tendency not to spend time doing the stuff that's uncomfortable and difficult for technical people who have been trained and practiced and are very comfortable with their technical competence. But then when you do things like coaching and mentoring and giving performance feedback and having to have to share bad, bad news, it gets very difficult and uncomfortable. And so there was too much actually on planning and not enough on the people side. Surprising? Maybe not. Reminder, important for us to consider in our organizations, are we remembering these things on a regular basis? We think it's an important piece to consider. If you're curious just about this in general and kind of if you're interested in Google, this guy Laszlo Bach, who is the global uh, people manager for, for HR now, has written a book and I suspect he'll be leaving Google shortly, probably could have retired a long time ago, but very, very talented guy and really a thought leader in the way of work and this notion of work rules is a pretty interesting insight. So